you could argue that because they've taken away 75 percent of our fishing areas mm -hmm. they've, they've, they've slashed our revenue on that aspects by potentially up to 75 percent right and i would say it's more than just the fishing industry as well yeah, it's, also it's all the, the tourism of as well. course What we're going to do here is we're going to talk about so, the fisheries. What's going on? Non-vegan topic now. The okay. fisheries. Well, what the um, government's trying to do is kind of like forcing us to be vegans. So, yeah. Okay. What it is in Australia, we yeah. have certain for environmental purposes, certain areas that you can't fish. So, sure. if there's like endangered coral or mm -hmm. spawning grounds for certain fish, you can't fish there. You can't do commercial fishing. You, you literally you're not allowed in there. You can't park there, um, mate. Yeah. Not with boats anyway. <laughs> so one of them, for example, is off the Ningaloo Reef up in, near Exmouth. Okay. There's there's a very good reason for that to be excluded from commercial fishing. Makes sense. So the problem is they've just created two day. I think there's five of them. It's constantly changing. This is evolving. So mm -hmm. I have to give a big shout out to to Bill Edgar, a friend oh, of ours. Absolutely. He's the one that actually made me aware of this one. So um, if it keeps continuing, I'm thinking we maybe we can get Bill in for a show. Good idea. Um, very Bill's very actually good. a skipper. Um, yep. So skipper or a captain i can't he, he's on the big boats so yes. not the little yeah. tiny yeah, dinghies. No, no dinghies he's got like no. big 40 50 60 foot boats so the, he's got the good ones mm. anyway so what's happening is the government's turned around and made five that i'm aware of uh exclusion zones okay. so they call them nature reserves wow. no recreational fishing no commercial fishing pretty much you're not allowed in these areas even at all um my understanding you can't even do windsurfing uh, wakeboarding all that sort of stuff okay, my Absolutely. question is why yeah. Oh, because they want to preserve the environment. The problem mm. is the the it's twenty five percent of the Western Australian coastline that's now being put into nature Whoa. reserves. Okay, yeah, it's a lot. Whoa. But the problem is that seventy five percent of our commercial fishing and recreational fishing areas. So it's all south of um Bustleton, all that sort of like the mm -hmm. Cove area in there. Sure. And then pretty much from Augusto Augustus all the way through to Etsperance has also been made exclusion zones. But you go to Esperance to go fishing. Yeah. Like, it, it's it's huge. And you, so just why, why, why do we care about fishing in, in a finance show? So yeah, back fine. in 2019, I know this because um, the recreational fishing licenses was attacked by Mark McGowan at the time. Mm -hmm. And it, it was actually worth $2 billion for the state economy. Okay. That is 2019. Mm -hmm. Now it's even more. So I haven't seen been able to find the actual figures at the moment. So right. what's happened effectively, they've you could argue that because they've taken away 75% of our fishing areas, mm -hmm. they've, they've, they've slashed our revenue on that aspect by potentially up to 75%. Right. And I would say it's more than just the fishing industry as well. Yeah. It's, also it's all the, the tourism as of well. Of course. Tourism. Yeah. You think about places like Cervantes and, and mm -hmm. that kind of area, like just all of that would be decimated. Like, and, I, and all of those, those crow fishermen, there's such an industry there. Yeah. That's just one that I can think of off the top of my head. Well, uh, the Perth region, so... Uh, San Remo, just south near Rockingham, yes, used yeah. to have a, an amazing crayfishing industry. I didn't know that. But then they absolutely decimated it. Okay. So you're mm. not allowed to actually crayfish out of San Remo anymore. Now, didn't I think that. the closest, like going north, was like the real one is Greenhead, mm -hmm. uh, which is just south of Geraldton. Okay. Um, so crayfishing is worth an insane amount of money for this Western Australian economy. Of course. Especially after China decided, to go, you know what, we love crayfish. One billion friend. annually. To our yeah. state, a billion, one so, billion yeah. annually. Well, this is a, this is the short side of this on the commercial is, side. It's not tourism. It's wow. just, yeah. So, I mean, look, we're talking about obviously the, the finance, the crossover with the politics here. The reality is that okay, this state is not just a mining town, and when, no. and the things that you're doing to try and destroy that, even that industry. I mean, you know, with, with destroying coal mining, all of that. Uh, I, what are you trying to do, honestly? What are our politicians trying to do? Are they trying to tank the West Australian economy? Absolutely, absolutely. So. The way I see this, the more industries they can force to tank, then the government can step in and take more. Because I raised this, um, I think it was last week's show, how the Labor government as a whole, in their actual constitution, yes. it states that they're a, social, a democratic socialist party. Sure. Which means they want everything to be socialist. It's going to take the competition out of the market. Yep. With these fishing zones, if you want to fish in there, you got to go to the government to go get permits and licenses. And we saw that, um, I can't remember if it was last year or the year before. Mm -hmm. So Mark McGowan was trying to sell out the cray fishing industry. Yes. And he, from what I'm hearing within the industry, a heap of the licenses that were going to be granted, mm -hmm. or most of them, 
I'm hearing over 75% of them were actually already queued up to be sold to international entities based out of China. That does not surprise me at all. And like, this is the thing, like when we're talking about McG McGowan was so destructive to this state, like, people really need to wake up and, and smell a mm. coffee on this one. And what we've got now with R Roger Crook, okay, is just literally McGowan light. Maybe, you know, like maybe Bud Light. I don't know. They're probably a bit, you know. One's got more balls than the other. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, so there you go. I but found... like, we're just getting, though, what I'm saying, we're getting a getting a continuation of this sale of our state to China. That's the reality. Especially the same as what happened in Victoria. And what's happening, Victoria is another one, is where they've got this like open season on private corporations. Yes. So, and a lot of people go, oh, you know, co private corporations don't pay enough tax and all that. that. That's bullshit. If you actually had a look, yeah, they may not pay much income tax, but if you mm. have a look at all the other taxes that they pay, it's an insane amount of money. Yeah. So, well, the we've government's got... cleverly set up the whole financial system. Mm. The businesses are used to collect sales tax on their behalf, right? It's mm. called GST. Mm -hmm. yep. So when you buy something at the till, you pay GST. Yep. Then, of course, every quarter, that business has to report on what its BAS was or business activity statement, sure. how much tax it collected, and then pay the deficit between yep. what it had to its costs and to, to run business versus against what it, it collected. And it, they're being used. Yep. Business owners are being yeah, used. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they're but, doing the work of the government. And but it costs the business more. owner. Let me just add, add this if, if I yeah. can. And it costs the business owner. It's at their expense to collect it because they have to do all the bookkeeping for it. And, yeah. and yes. pay for all the bookkeeping True. expenses. Right? Very good point. It's not it's free. It, we are being used oh. as business owners by the government to collect tax. So we should be invoicing the government for our bookkeeping expenses. Well, so, I shall do that. So <laughs> yes. the, yeah, well, we've already got a few comments coming through. So right. I'm, I'm assuming this is um, Damien. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously it's come up as Facebook user again. Uh, can I sw nude swim there? Oh, where? Talking about the exclusion zones? <laughs> like, by the sounds of it, it's clothing excluded. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Damo, that's completely up to you, mate, really, um, and those around you, really. <laughs> I, I just want to go back to what Derek was saying about the, the corporations tax and all that sort of yes. stuff. So, yes, you're paying GST. Mm. So, actually, the end consumer ends up paying that one. But then, obviously, there's a massive push towards the digital currencies and yep. not using cash. So, all the banks are charging a fees and charges to use the, the FPOS machines. On top of that, if you earn more than $1.2 million as a, as a whole gross income, you then got to pay payroll tax mm -hmm. per employer. You go pay the income tax and all of that. And then you got to pay the uh, public liability insurance, which has GSC component to it. You've got the workers' compensation insurance. You've got the superannuation on top of that. So, a huge amount of the expenses that businesses have to actually pay is actually still tax. Absolutely. So just because you're not paying income, like corporations tax or income tax, because you've structured yourself properly. Yep. It doesn't mean you're not paying tax. Of course. There, there's all these fees and charges and taxes and government charges. Well, I think it's structured with. that way to create the public perception. It's so that the government can paint the business as the mm. bad guy and take the, the emphasis off themselves. So now remember, if there's no businesses, there's no jobs. That's spot on. No jobs. And if there's no businesses, there's no tax or anyone to collect the That's tax right. on their behalf. That's right. Mm. So, But it's okay because what we can do is we can just go and have uh, everyone on a universal basic income. That would be great. Yeah, great then system. You're going to be told, right, we need garbage collectors. Oh. So, right, you may have a PhD, a doctorate in zoology. Sure. But go collect that rubbish because yep. we need someone to do the rubbish yep. collection. So, no, it's oh, – just keep my toe. Um, I think it's – the the. Socialism never works, but I address this one before. So, if you want to be part of the socialist system, that's great. If you don't want to be one, go get yourself structured properly yeah, and be but Travis, join the capitalist no, no, system. No, 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 no. The problem with socialism, okay, and communism is it's just never been done right before. And I'm sure the new version will be better than. I mean, we would have worked out all the kinks, no problem whatsoever. This is so naive; it drives me nuts because every time I hear it, I get some blue haired idiot on, on Facebook or whatever having a go or screaming along. Right? Oh, it's just oh no, 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 no. Well, communism was just done wrong before. No. No, human nature is human nature and the way people interact with others and people need to have value in their lives and they have to have purpose. If you don't have purpose, you're going absolutely nowhere. You know and the that's best what thing, this causes. The best thing I ever did for this show is actually take my shoes off. This is actually really comfortable. Well, not for the show. Trust me, it's not great for the show. I'm glad you can't smell this on camera. Mm, exactly. <laughs> Look, apart from getting away from his feet, what are your thoughts on this, Derek? Well, I, I, I agree with you in terms of socialism doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And what do we do? Well, it didn't work the first time, second time, third time. We're going to keep trying, doing the same, done the same thing over and over oh. again. And, and you're absolutely right in terms of highlighting its greed and self-interest of, of the heart. 
that is the problem. Okay, yeah. something may sound great in theory, but it play, plays out. Um, those with the power cannot help themselves. And I think everybody, I think you got to look at that. What is your price? Mm. What is your price where you where you where you'd sell out? By the way, it because is <laughs> because most people would sell out at some point. Of course they would. But of course they would. There are some things you've got to go. I can't be bought. I can't be bought. Uh, everyone's got a price. Oh, Everyone right. has. We proved that before with Aaron. He's like, I don't have a price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just right. offered his kid for a like a year and purchased him. Got him. Well, yeah, that's not a financial price. That's a. Yeah. Everyone has yes, a price. Yes. I didn't say it, it was financial. I know price. you got like, me on that. You got me on the price. semantics. I get it. Uh, yeah. But it, but it's true. Unfortunately, we can whatever if it's money or or anything else, we can. We all have a price. We all can be bought. Well, I think we've got to get to the point where we understand that the waters don't belong to the government. The waters belong to the people of Australia. They so do, right? This is the bit that I'm really curious about, right? Mm -hmm. So in the Australian Constitution, it says that uh, the government cannot own God anything that's God-given. Right. Um, I can't remember what section it is. It's, like, it's one of the more obscure ones. Okay. So what it's implying for is, like, for example, you can't tax rain. Sure. Because it's a God-given thing. It's, it's always going to be there. It just happens. You can't tax it. So mm -hmm. what they're doing is effectively they're excluding people from certain areas of the ocean, which is a God-given thing. That's right. So are yeah, they but, even allowed but, to do Well, that? we live in a world where the CEO of Nestle, right, okay, the people who make chocolate, mm -hmm. okay, believe and is actually try to put it in play where they actually own the rights to water okay and that oh that's coca-cola they're already doing it in wa this is the world that we live in i oh, know have a look at mount franklin water oh, it's it's all... is, is effectively tap water by the charging arm and the leg yeah i'm not talking about the the retail side of it like literally the the ceo from there is they wanted to own the rights to water so you know taking away a fundamental human right Penny Wong does that over over race with the um, Murray River yes, Basin. Yes, good point. One of the, the largest water owners in Australia is Penny Wong. That's crazy. So it like, is true. It's Nestle, like, like American in that regards, they're, they're miles behind Victoria and New South Wales. So <laughs> <laughs> you want to learn about dictatorships? Get yourself down to the – was it the Garden State? I don't know. Whatever the state is. Victoria. What do they call it? Anyway, so, no, like – selling god-given things is like new south wales victoria has been doing that for decades so. right okay you know yeah. it, but okay it's like with credit the, to I, I will say to this too i think don't but my pe most people who don't don't fish don't realize mm. how closely monitored especially even the recreational oh, fishing industry time. is is actually done i remember just being out at the jetty um down near woodman's point one time mm. with you my know family. the fisheries have more authority and, than the police well it was crazy right there was somebody who had pulled in a shark a gummy little gummy shark mm -hmm. yeah and they put it in their bucket for a few minutes or whatever within uh, you know the space of 20 minutes to 30 minutes yep. there was somebody down from the fisheries department investigating this wow so somebody had said something or they picked it up somehow on a drone or camera on the on the jetty or something like that karen attack but somebody was down there and it's it's not a jetty that you can get to straight from the parking lot you've got to park walk down oh, really? a, a path yeah. walk down the beach um, so it's not one that's, you know, there's traffic going by. Yeah. Yep. So if you think that, you know, in terms of, you know, the green factor of, of environmentalism protection, there are already a lot of things in place that, of that, mm. that protect that. So here's something else that a lot of people don't, aren't aware of. Mm. So for a police to raid your house, they need a warrant. My right. understanding is the fisheries don't. So let's say abalone is a big one in Australia, especially WA. So if you take an abalone out of season – expect to lose your car your boat your house lose a whole lot because what happens they turn around and say that's a proceeds of crime it's a proceeds of um uh, i forget what they call it when you take fish that are undersized right they'll just confiscate it okay they take the whole lot off you sure and there's and, nothing and, you can do to yeah. get it back and you find out the christmas party but never mind yeah um so yeah abalone abalone you don't touch it uh marin up near the hut river up mm -hmm. near geraldton is another one like Ooh, it, it's oh, Ooh, so, yeah. um Oh, there's so many stories I want to tell about Marin, but I've got to be careful because it's, yeah, the, the Just fisheries are so bad with it. Like if you, even 10 minutes. So when yeah. I was a kid, yeah, okay. how this, so this is going probably 30 years ago. So mm. I don't think I was 10 yet. So I'm 40 now. So it's more than 30 years ago. Sure. We were going down the Hutt River. And mm. so you can see the Marin everywhere. Like you're just reaching the water, grab one. Mm. And so we we're sitting there and like we had the snares. So we, Grabbed one. It was like 10 minutes before the time. And the fish was like, oi, boy, put that back. And so, like, that's how nasty they were. And you're a nine-year-old kid or whatever. Yeah. 
yeah. So I, I mean, look, I don't know what a hundred years ago in this state, you didn't need a license to do about ninety percent of the things you need a license for now. Well, and and hundred years ago, they were giving you land as long as you went around and TNT'd all the trees to clear yeah, it for fun. Pretty fun. <laughs> but I mean, okay, honestly, we've got a, you know, a situation here in Western Australia. We've got a massive homeless crisis. We've got people who are struggling for money. All of that, right? And you fundamentally can't even go and get a, catch a fish to eat. I, I mean, I know that just might sound oversimplified, but that's the truth of the matter. Is right, look, we're so controlled. Some you people can't have... even shoot a kangaroo without a um a license these days. Hang on, we've got a message here. I'm assuming it's from Damo again. It's a long one. So obligations uh, for no matter what system you choose, socialism, communism, capitalism, etc. The only difference is the obligation is to have a solid dem democratic process, but that it. That itself can only be achieved with help from within the system we have. We don't need another socialist solution. No, we don't. Absolutely. So he, he makes it, um, I'm going to assume I read that correctly. Um, doesn't matter what system you're in, every single one has obligations and things that you have to do according to the system that you're in. So sure. a lot of it comes down to deciding what system you want to be in and following their their your obligations under that system so and he's also proving the point that we don't need another socialist solution because there's already enough of them there is exactly yeah. right so okay um, again i'm assuming that's demo it's it's actually i'm loving these comments coming through so please keep them coming through um so yeah just going back to the fishing side of things <sighs> It's already overly regulated. Mm -hmm. Most of the fish that we do catch in the commercial zones, we send offshore, then we bring in fish from other countries. I, right? I, I just don't get that And the one. problem with that is the mercury levels of those other countries, oh. the waters, right, is, is really a problem in terms of health. I think well, that's what a lot of people don't realise is how bad the mercury levels are. They need to have a look at the mercury levels in Coburn Sound. Yeah. Um, there was a massive mercury spill there. Um, that's where they want to build the outer harbour. They want to drill through the mercury area so they don't flood yeah. Most of the WA coastline of Mercury. That sounds horrendous. Yep. Okay. Oh, look, I just remember something as a child, right? As a child, we used to go down and I'd go fish off at Como Jetty and I'd you know, catch my tailor and my cobbler and all my bits and pieces. Oh, cobblers. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. And, you know, the images I remember of all the families, in, in fact, you know, our family as well, would go prawning through the Swan River. This just doesn't <laughs> exist anymore. Sorry. None I'm, of that happens, right? Oh, None of that happens. and giggles tangent. Sorry. So this is ADHD going in. <laughs> so when I was a kid, I'm, I'm talking under 10 again. So I think okay. it was like, eight or something so right. i'm all of four foot nothing uh my stepdad was like six foot one so okay we used to take the handheld trawling nets through the mandra estuary like yeah perfectly legal like we're not breaking any laws or anything so we've got i'm in the, on the shallow end and peter's on the deep end and we're yep. going through the river and what happened this dolphin breached right oh, next to him oh. and did the whole pff, he shat himself and i've never seen someone walk on water before <laughs> and <laughs> Because it was about a week after they found a heap of bull sharks in the Mandra Estuary. Is that right? And so I'm like, oh, I've got this net. And because, it is, you know, it's about 10 metres long. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm struggling to hold this thing. And there's a whole school of dolphins, like, blowing out of the water. And, yeah, anyway, so. so there so, so. you go. Well, what I'm getting at is the fact that as I, look, Part of my childhood, we were able to go down there and fish, and there was never we weren't harassed, we had no issues, we weren't, you know, we'd, we'd take them to size. Um, as a you know, 12 year old, I never had a license, you know, all of this sort of thing, all this regulation just takes away. And but it it, the on the way. financial side of things, the fact that they're restricting so much commercial fishing, mm. okay, you just you are literally dumping the economy of WA, and and we've got to stop this reliance on oh we just well, we do mining and nothing else. The twenty five percent of our coastland is probably near where most cities are, where mm -hmm. people have their ports, where the they vast sure. majority of our yeah. population is along there. That, so. That's that's the thing. You uh, actually, I won't, say a, I won't say a vast majority because the majority is in Perth, but the moment you get out of the metropolitan mm -hmm. area to the south. Um, I'm not sure how many there are north, but it's going south. Like, like I said, from pretty much Bunbury to Bustleton, that's now all an exclusion zone. Going around the corner, you, because if you go off the coast of Augustus, you get some massive storms out there. But from um, Augustus all the way through the Esperance, I think it's going a little bit further than that, like well and truly past Hopeton and all that sort of stuff. Wow. Yeah, yeah, there's there's not much left there that you can actually do on the, That's on the south coast. Mm. And some of the beaches down there are absolutely stunning, especially like Albany and that. Mm. Like, oh, they are. Oh, they're gorgeous. Yeah. Thank you.